are surrounded these days by loads of data, metrics, and information. But as always, this information will only add value if we use it smartly. Let's say, for example, that like many people in the world, you have a simple goal, such as a goal to lose weight. And like many people in the world, you have a smartwatch that feeds you with loads of information about your physical activity. If you decided to monitor one metric, say for example, your heart rate, how likely are you to achieve your goal of losing weight? Incredibly unlikely, right? But on the other hand, if you decided to monitor a battery of metrics, such as the number of steps achieved, the number of calories consumed, the number of calories burned, and other such metrics, all of a sudden, your chances of, of achieving your goal start to improve exponentially. Still, you would need to measure your weight on a periodic basis in order to manage it. So there are two points that I want to make with respect to using data in order to achieve a goal. The first is that what gets measured gets managed. It's very difficult to manage something that we're not measuring. And the second is that when we bring together data and metrics in a meaningful way, our chances of, of achieving our goal start to improve significantly. Now let's come back to the pandemic and this unprecedented year. Like many of you, I believe that South Africa could have been better prepared for COVID-19. And one of the things that made me really sad is that the pandemic served to exacerbate the inequality in what is already the most unequal society on the planet. So it occurred to me, what if we use data to manage our way into a more equal society? If we did that, and if we achieved that, it would no doubt mean that the most vulnerable members of our society are benefited and that their quality of life is improved. It would also be a sure way to respond more resiliently to the next pandemic. Now, coming back to this idea of what gets measured gets managed. What metric would we choose to monitor if we were to try and manage our way into a more equal society? The economists, who, by the way, always have an answer to every problem, would probably tell us that the answer lies in boosting the economy. And in accordance with that, the metric that we would need to monitor is GDP, gross domestic product. But here's the problem with that. We have been doing exactly that for the last 86 years, measuring GDP and trying to boost the economy. And look where it has landed us. Do you know why? It's because GDP doesn't care that the rich get richer whilst the poor get poorer. It doesn't care that shareholders gain whilst the ordinary man struggles to feed his family. It doesn't care about whether or not taxpayer money is spent efficiently to benefit society. It doesn't care about climate change or fairness and justice. It cannot measure happiness and well-being. All GDP cares about is the sum total of goods and services sold. My dear South Africans, in an effort to make South Africa a better place, we've been monitoring the wrong metric. And so if we are to deliberately manage our way into a more equal society, we need a new metric. One that takes into account the real things that matter to real people. I have a master's degree in social science and I've spent my entire career in research. So I know a thing or two about metrics and social progress. What if I told you that there is a tool, a metric, that can provide us with a robust and reliable view of the quality of life of a society, irrespective of the economy? Introducing the Social Progress Index. As you can see, the Social Progress Index has three dimensions. Basic human needs, 
foundations of well-being and opportunity. It answers the real questions that matter to real people. Questions around food, water, shelter, safety, basic education, access to information and communications, health and wellness, environmental quality, rights, freedom and choice, inclusiveness, and higher education. It uses about 50 indicators from reliable sources to provide a robust view of social progress around the world. Now, I'm sure that you are wondering which country is number one in social progress. I can tell you that for the third year running, it is Norway, followed by Denmark, Finland, New Zealand, and Sweden making up the top five. Where is South Africa? Well, I'm afraid you'd have to scroll all the way down to 82nd spot out of 163 countries to find our flag. But here's the interesting thing. Of these top five countries, none of them are economic powerhouses. In fact, none of them are in the top 20 of the world's biggest economies measured in nominal GDP. New Zealand, for example, is basically a farm with some really good rugby players. GDP is not destiny. And yet, we've made it the most important metric in the world for the last 86 years. And if we look back at the history of GDP, it was originally used to help the United States come out of the Great Depression in the 1930s. But we've since been using it as an indicator for social progress for the last 86 years. Surely, it is time for a measurement revolution. So how is all of this relevant in the context of the pandemic and South Africa? I'd like to use the Eastern Cape as an example to illustrate why it's relevant. On screen, you will see what South Africa looks like from a social progress point of view. A score of 100 indicates optimal levels of social progress, whilst a score of zero indicates minimal levels of social progress. As you can see, Gauteng and the Western Cape are on top, whilst the Eastern Cape is the worst performing province. Am I starting to convince you that social progress is relevant? No? What if I told you that the Eastern Cape is currency, currently experiencing a spike in COVID-19 infections and deaths? Still not convinced? Let's take one of the social progress index components, water and sanitation. So on screen, you'll see now what South Africa looks like from a water and sanitation point of view. As you'll see, the Eastern Cape is one of the worst performing provinces. I believe that had this view of South Africa from a water and sanitation point of view been created decades ago, perhaps something could have been done by government, civil society or the private sector to improve the situation and to ensure that the Eastern Cape is not left behind. Instead, we find ourselves in a situation where Slightly under a quarter of households in the Eastern Cape do not have access to tap water. And slightly over a quarter of schools in the Eastern Cape still only use pit toilets for sanitation purposes. Still not convinced that social progress matters? Let's take another component from the social progress index, health and wellness, a proxy indicator for the quality of the healthcare system as you will see, the Eastern Cape is one of the worst performing provinces. I recently read that of the 10 deadliest COVID-19 hospitals in South Africa, seven of them are located in the Eastern Cape. Again, had this view of South Africa been created decades ago, perhaps someone would have done something to ensure that the Eastern Cape is not left behind. Instead, we currently find ourselves in a situation where the Eastern Cape is experiencing a COVID-19 crisis that is far more acute compared to some of the other provinces in South Africa. Still not convinced that social progress matters? Let's take one more component from the social progress index, access to information and communications. 
something that I'm sure you'd agree is vital during a time like this. Did you know that only 11% of schools in the Eastern Cape have access to the internet versus 86% in the Western Cape, its neighboring province? Or that slightly under a quarter of households in the Eastern Cape do not have a television set? How would they have watched those all important addresses by our president this year? In the end, it is clear to me that advancing social progress is the best way for us to respond to the inequality problem. And perhaps equally important, the best way for us to prepare for the next pandemic. If we haven't been accurately measuring social progress, how can we truly say that we've been optimally managing social progress? But the tool to measure and manage social progress is now in our hands. So let's join hands and give future generations of South Africans a better South Africa than the one that was handed to us. Thank you.